Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Connie, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Connie, so again, Connie, thank you so much. And for the personalized deck tech, Connie chose a partner commander combination with Anara and Nadir with a focus on wolf tribal and wolf tokens. Anara Volvid Familiar is a 4-4 wolf beast for a 3 and a green. It has, as long as it's your turn, commanders you control have indestructible. And of course, as I mentioned, this is a partner deck, so obviously it has partner as well. So our other partner is Nadir, Agent of Duskanel, a 3-3 elf warrior for 5 and a black. Nadir has, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on Nadir, Agent of Duskanel. And when Nadir leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 green elf warrior creature tokens equal to its power. So with this being a wolf tribal commander deck looking to make wolf tokens, well, when those tokens leave play, Nadir is gonna grow larger and larger, and then when Nadir leaves play, we get a ton of elf warrior creature tokens. On top of that, both of our commanders are obviously pretty well protected during our turn as well, thanks to Inara giving them both indestructible. So we can feel free to be pretty aggressive with these commanders and swing out with them as needed. And really quick, every single card in this deck, including the commanders, is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck. But what are those wolves and wolf tribal pieces that we're going to be utilizing in this deck? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So first up, we've got some wolves that can pump our team with Nightpack Ambusher, Spirit of the Hunt, and Somberwald Alpha. Nightpack Ambusher is a 4-4 wolf that has flash and costs 2 green green. It has other wolves and werewolves you control get plus plus 1, and at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So this not only is a fantastic anthem for our other wolves, but it's also a way to make more and more wolves if we're not casting any spells. And then Spear of the Hunt is a 3-3 wolf spirit with flash that has, when it enters the battlefield, each other creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf gets plus 0 plus 3 until end of turn. So we can flash this in as a fantastic combat trick to save our creatures, whether they're attacking or blocking, by giving them some extra toughness. And speaking of helping our creatures out in combat, there's Somberwald Alpha, which is a 3-2 wolf that says whenever a creature control becomes blocked, gets plus plus 1 until end of turn. On top of that, by paying 1 into green, we can give tar creature we control trample until end of turn. So this can make our creatures even tougher to block and help us get damage through when they are blocked. Next up, we've got Pack Song Pup, a 1-1 wolf that has the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control another wolf or werewolf, put a plus plus one counter on Pack Song Pup, and when it dies, you gain life equal to its power. So, obviously, in a wolf tribal deck, we're going to have plenty of wolves, and yeah, this thing's going to grow throughout the game and gain us a lot of life when it eventually does die. And speaking of growing throughout the game, there is Witch Stalker, which is a 3-3 wolf with Hexproof, and it says whenever an opponent casts a blue or black spell during your turn, put a plus plus one counter on Witch Stalker. So if our opponents do decide to cast spells during our turn in their blue or black, this is going to grow, and it can be really hard to deal with again because of that Hexproof. But next up, we've actually got a wolf that can wipe a lot of things out with the Wolf Realm Meter. It's a 3-3 wolf that says whenever a permanent an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on Sir Wolf Realm Meter. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Sir Wolf has one or more plus plus one counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non-land permanent with converting mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. So this is a wolf that can grow absolutely massive throughout the game, and if we need to on our upkeep, well, we can get rid of those counters and get rid of pretty much everything on the board. Moving on though, let's talk about Wolfier Avenger, a 3-3 with Flash that has pay 1 in a green regenerated. These wolves with Flash can be very impactful in the right situation, and being able to regenerate this can keep it around for quite some time. Next up, Chameleon Colossus is a 4-4 shapeshifter with Changeling, so technically a wolf, and it's got protection from black, and by paying 2 green green, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is its power. So we can make this thing absolutely massive, and in the right situation, it can be very deadly. 
Finally, though, there is Wolfkin Outcast, a 5-4 that costs too less to cast if we control a wolf or werewolf, so yeah, this is basically just going to cost us 4 mana pretty much all the time. On top of that, it's got Daybound, so when it becomes night, it switches over to Wedding Crasher. Wedding Crasher is a 6-5 werewolf that has whenever it or another wolf or werewolf you control dies, draw a card, and of course, it's got Nightbound. So this can provide us a lot of card advantage throughout the game and can be fantastic board wipe insurance. But of course, we're not quite done with talking about wolves just yet. So now let's move on to the golden pick of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Tovalar's Huntmaster. It's a 6-6 human werewolf with Daybound that costs 4 green green, and it has, when it enters the battlefield, create 2-2-2 green wolf creature tokens. And once it becomes night, it flips over to Tovalar's Pack Leader, which is a 7-7 werewolf that has, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create 2-2-2 green wolf creature tokens. On top of that, by paying two green green, and their target wolf or werewolf you control fights target creature you don't control. This card is absolutely incredible. This is a massive threat that can generate a lot of wolves throughout the game. Again, when it's on the backside, we get them each time we attack, we're getting two. And on top of that, with this, we can utilize our other wolves to take out our opponent's creatures through fighting. This thing is a massive threat that can make us an army in absolutely no time. It can take out our opponent's most important creatures, and yeah, for all those reasons, that's why it is most definitely the golden pick of this deck. Moving on though, we do have other ways to make wolf tokens of things like Ferocious Pup, Pack Guardian, and Somberwald Beastmaster. Ferocious Pup is just a 0-1, but when it enters the battlefield, we get a 2-2 green wolf creature token. And then Pack Guardian is a 4-3 with Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, if we discard a land, we get that same wolf token. Next up, Somberwald Beastmaster might just be a 1-1, but it can give us a ton of power with a 2-2 green wolf, a 3-3 green beast, and a 4-4 green beast, and on top of that, it gives our creature tokens we control Death Touch. Its cost at 7 mana is pretty high, but it can definitely make an impact in the right situations. And speaking of high cost, high impact, let's talk about Wolf Briar Elemental. It's a 4-4 elemental with multi-kicker green. When it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token for each time it was kicked. So by dumping a ton of mana into this, we can get a ton of wolves out of nowhere. And speaking of a ton of wolves out of nowhere, let's talk about Kessig Cagebreakers. It's a 3-4 human rogue that has, when it attacks, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token that's tapped and attacking for each creature card in your graveyard. So the longer the game goes and the more creatures we get in our graveyard, the more impactful this becomes. Next up though, there's Arlen Voice of the Pack, which has 7 loyalty and says each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf enters the battlefield with additional plus one counter on it. On top of that, it's minus 2 is creating 2-2 green wolf creature token. So not only can this make us wolf tokens, but it can also pump every single wolf that comes into play. Moving on though, there's Predator's Howl, which is going to make us 1 wolf token, or 3 if a creature died this turn. And to make even more tokens, we've got Howl the Night Pack, which is going to give us a 2-2 green wolf creature token for each force we control. With a green deck like this one, obviously we've got plenty of ways to ramp and get more and more force into play for this. And then Feed the Pack can be a very impactful enchantment for this deck. It says at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non-token creature if you do put X-2-2 green wolf creature tokens on the battlefield or X the sacrifice creature's toughness. So yeah, this can turn our wolves into even more wolves and can be very good with pump effects as well. And speaking of pump effects, we've got Mantle of the Wolf, which says Enchanted Creature gets plus four plus four, and when it's put to a grave from the battlefield, create two 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 green wolf creature tokens. In a somewhat similar way, we've got Raised by Wolves, which when it enters the battlefield, we get two 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 green wolf creature tokens, and it's going to give Enchanted Creature plus one plus one for each wolf we control. And finally, there's Wolf Willow Haven, which we can put on a land and make it tap for initial green, and if we really need to, we can pay four and a green to sacrifice it to get a two two wolf. Flexibility is really never a bad thing. But what are some ways that we can make our wolves even more impactful? First up, we're going to be running Guy's Anthem, which is, well, just an anthem. It's going to give creatures we control plus and plus one, so yeah, with all those wolf tokens that we're going to be making, that can make a big difference. Speaking of which, there's the Cree of Savagery, which is an instant that says put four plus plus one counters on each creature you control, and we can actually cycle it if we do, we get four counters on one creature. This can be a fantastic combat trick for us at instant speed to pump our creatures permanently. But some non-permanent pumps can be very impactful as well, like Overrun, Return of the Wild Speaker, and Vitalizing Wind. Overrun is going to give creatures we control plus 3 plus 3 and trample until end of turn. Return of the Wild Speaker has choose 1, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. So we can utilize this to draw a lot of cards, or as a fantastic combat trick. Speaking of which, Vitalizing Wind can make our creatures incredibly deadly, giving creatures we control plus 7 plus 7 until end of turn. And finally, we actually have some tribal effects with things like Tribal Unity and Crippling Fear. Travel Unity is an instant that's going to give our wolves plus X plus X until end of turn. And then Crippling Fear says choose a creature type. Creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus three, minus three until end of turn. So this can be a fantastic one-sided board wipe that can wipe out a lot of our opponent's smaller creatures. And speaking of board wipes... 
Let's quickly go through our pieces of removal and board wipes with cards like Hex, Gaze of Granite, Casualties of War, Nevinrol's Disc, Ingaric's Wake, Unravel the Aether, Deglamour, Wilt, Return Nature, and Masked Vandal. And one thing to note with Masked Vandal, that is a Changeling, so yeah, it's a wolf as well. Moving on though, we've got some ways to protect our key pieces with things like Snakeskin Veil, Professor's Warning, and Golgari Charm. Snakeskin Veil says put a plus plus one counter on target creature you control, it gains Hexproof until end of turn. And the Professor's Warning gives us an option, choose one, put plus plus one counter on target creature, or target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. And then Golgari Charm also gives us an option, it says choose one, all creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn, destroy target enchantment, or regenerate each creature you control. Each of those options can really help us out in a lot of situations. But now let's quickly go through the ramp in this deck, and actually I just want to point out, Soul Ring and Arcane Signet are now finally budget with all of their reprints, so you'll see them here. So again, we've got Soul Ring, Talisman of Resilience, Arcane Signet, Font of Fertility, Search for Tomorrow, Secure Tribe Elder, Explore, Rampant Growth, Cultivate, and Migration Path. And since we're going through a list of cards, let's also go through the card advantage spells in this deck with cards like Harmonize, Read the Bones, Skeletal Scrying, Ambitions Cost, Ancient Craving, Dark Bargain, Sign of Blood, Scum to Temptation, Promise of Power, and Danable Pact. Whew, okay, that was a lot. Anyways, now that we've gone through every single non-land card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Like I mentioned before at the beginning of this episode, every single card in this deck, including the commanders, is less than $1. So because of that, obviously this deck is very budget friendly, being just $32.06. Though, do keep in mind that this SMA cost does include the cost of basic land, so if you already have those cards, well, that's some extra savings there. And speaking of additional savings, if you buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize heavily played and damaged cards, you might be able to save even more than that. Though, do keep in mind that this SMA cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.